it's not gonna be a blind react because i've already seen it because it happened um a couple days yesterday i think uh the ocg ban list and everyone at the regional was talking about it so it was impossible for me to avoid um being spoiled uh so it's not gonna be a blind react but still uh the the positive of that is that i had some time to to think about the stuff that happened um yeah let's just let's talk about it real quick now the one thing that the ocg does have is they have set dates for their ban list so they knew this was coming right they knew this was coming uh, it's been announced way before that this was going to be, uh, uh, you know, the thing. Uh, Syntax, thank you for the two months. Uh, are there more remote duels planned soon? I I have remote duels planned. Uh, I'm getting I'm getting pretty overlays done for them at the moment. They should be done anytime. Uh, I was expecting them over the weekend already. I haven't gotten them yet, but I will I will have uh, I will have the the overlays done, and then we're gonna be um, we're gonna be dueling again. Anyways, OCG ban list. These are the changes. Let's just go over them real quick. <laughs> Mr. Kunir, I think for the 12 months. They limited title, which I assume was banned beforehand. I'm like 99% sure that that's the case. Uh, must be the case. There's no way that was at two and got limited. <laughs> so it must have been banned. Uh, we have Wanted Limited, which is a change that I suggested in my TCG discussion as well, so I am a fan of that change. Uh, Tikaboo Limited, which obviously is a good change. Floodgates... The more Floodgates they hit, the better. So the only thing to say about that is it's just Tikaboo. Um, Semi-Limited, we have Ib, which was already at 1. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was. It's always confusing now that we have... We have an OCG ban list, a TCG ban list, a Master Duel ban list. I sometimes just forget uh, where cards are. But, like, I believe this card was limited and is now slowly making its way up. The card did not have any impact on the game at 1. It's not going to change if it's at 2. Um, I'm assuming that card is going to be at 3 at some point. And here is the big one, the, the huge head scratcher for everybody that was being made fun of. Um, which is SP Little Knight is now semi-limited in the OCG. It's at two. Which obviously was... It sparked a lot of memes and everything because that card, basically, I would say 90% of the time is being played at one. There are some decks that play two. There is not a single deck in the game that plays three, except for maybe some very, very niche deck with Pot of Extravagance. But not really. The third SP never matters. So, and even if you, even if your argument is it hits the Extravagance decks, that is still a super stupid hit. Because, like, you don't want to hit only the extravagance decks why would you hit only the extravagance decks uh, uh, like when everyone is playing sp plus they put extravagance to two on the same list anyways this is obviously obviously a super super ridiculous hit and there i think there are two possible reasons for this two the first reason which is what everyone is spamming on the internet right now is that the person who created this ban list must be incredibly out of touch with the game. That is one theory that I've seen. Because putting SP to 2 makes no sense at all. From a game design perspective. It does not matter, right? Um, so that's the first possibility. <laughs> the second possibility, which I believe... I, I've, I don't know where, but I saw one person comment that somewhere. Was that they think... That that is just basically a practice that that functions as a sort of like warning shot, right? It's basically them saying we're gonna we're semi-limiting SP to let you know we're gonna limit it next ban list and then maybe even ban it the list after. I don't know if that makes sense, but that is, I, I like the thing is a part of me wants to believe that theory because. The other theory is just so mind-blowingly stupid. 
right like the 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 fact that like the the, the the i refuse to believe that they think that this hit does something right i refuse to believe it because they i mean literally no one plays more than two most people play one there's no way you think that this does anything right so it must be from that logic it must be like the the reason must be hey we're gonna give you a little warning you know this card we are aware that this card is very good we put it onto the ban list we don't want it to leave the game just yet but be aware that we know it's powerful right that that could you know that is uh that is that but other than that it's it's a very it's a very weird one okay we've got kirin to two which is a comp I, in my opinion a very irrelevant hit um because i think the majority of lists at least for us are already only playing two kirins um i think it's more popular at three in the ocg because kirin is one of the better cards when it comes to playing on your opponent's turn when you get max seed uh so they do play three i think that's okay um but it's not a huge hit i don't think i i don't think it's 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 that big of a deal like it's it's fine putting kirin to two it's not that big of a deal uh, Snake Eye Ash to 2 is kind of the same thing. Uh, it's a small consistency hit. Um, I have talked about hitting Snake Eye Ash also on the podcast last week a lot. And on my own bandless prediction dis slash discussion as well. I think... I'm, I'm repeating myself. If you've seen that podcast already, I'm sorry. But like, I think... On the one hand, this is a consistency hit, which I'm not a big fan of. On the other hand, I think that limiting or semi-limiting Snake Eye Ash is decent because if you have to use other cards to get Snake Eye Ash, that makes your deck more vulnerable and less able to go into different sort of lines. For example, if you have to use Bonfire to fetch Snake Eye Ash, you do not have Bonfire as an extender to play through hand traps. And you also are way weaker to Droll and Lockbird. If you have to use your Diabell Star to get to Snake Eye Ash, then you cannot use the original Sinful Spoils to summon out Jet, Jet Synchron or Ponyx, right? So in that sense, I think hitting Snake Eye Ash is solid. Because if you have to use those other cards to get it, then you are basically limiting what you can do in the turn. Um, as opposed to just hard drawing Snake Eye Ash, normal summoning it, and then having all the extenders available in the world. So I think hitting Snake Eye Ash makes more sense than you think. Although, semi-limiting is obviously kind of like the minimum effort that they could have put in. Like, in general, if you look at this, if you think about how dominant Snake Eye is for the OCG right now, and also think, think about that, they have had the deck for longer than we have. For like a couple... Um, they have had it for like a couple months. And it's been dominating all the way through. And for them to see only those hits... Like a one of limit wanted, semi limit Ash, and then semi limit Kirin for the Fire King version. That's so tame. That's so tame. It's been the best deck for like five months. That's crazy. Um. Then we have Kaiser Coliseum, which I don't know where this was. Was this at three or was this at one or banned? I don't know. Where was where was Kaiser Coliseum? It was at three interesting i guess it is seeing play at the moment i think tenpai plays it for going first after siding so that's okay uh part of extravagance to two is all right i suppose uh we have summon sorceress unlimited uh which you might be wondering why they did that that card has gotten an errata which we're going to look at in a second uh, and then we have a whole bunch of unlimits that are all very justified i think we have girsu we have a uh, dragon worm or Dark Worm, rather. Uh, Supreme King Dark Worm, whatever. We have Right, we have Infernity Launcher, and we have Change of Art. All based on limits, honestly. Uh, Infernity is a little scary, because it's kind of like this crazy combo deck. Um, but I, I I, don't think it's that big of a problem. So, like, uh, all, of this is, all of this is fine. Um, one thing, before we look at the Summon Sorceress Unlimit. My personal opinion on this ban list is that a lot of these changes are okay. Except for the SP. We've talked about the SP. A lot of these changes are okay changes. Individually. Right? They all, they all make sense. 
It, it, it is the majority of these or all of these actually are cards moving in the right direction on the ban list, right? Like we have floodgates coming onto the ban list. We have snake eye and fire cards com coming onto the ban list. And we have cards that are not very powerful anymore moving away from the ban list, right? And that's fine. The problem here is that it just doesn't do enough is my take I, I i think for a ban list that has been awaited for a long time with fire dominating the game like crazy this is um this is simply not cutting it right it's simply not enough and of course fire decks are gonna suffer from a little bit less consistency you know lose two wanted lose a snake eye ash i do not think that's going to solve the problem or that's gonna make fire not the best deck there is no way that they just stop playing fire now they will keep playing fire um so the way they are treating the fire deck right now it kind of reminds me how they treated tier limits right you you guys remember when they got list after list after list with some small hits to tier limits and they would just never stop playing tier limits it was like it, it got a meme at some point that like there was a new ban list again and then they tier limits was the best deck like two days later they got a ban list again tier limits was the best deck two days later and so on and so forth that was like an entire year of ocg was just like some ban list happening and then the ocg players were like nah we still play tier right um and that's going for now that's going to be the same with snake eye at this point in time um and i have one thing here that i actually found very interesting um, this is an OCG player uh, tweeting the following thing. Two folks in US, SA, EU, UK. We envy how Konami in TCG manages your ban list. Konami in Japan has been pit putting insufficient, timid, irrelevant, out of touch, and out of sync ban lists for quite a while. The, cumu the cumulative effect of their incompetence is now ruining the entire game. Um, of course, this is only one person. So I don't know if this reflects the entire OCG community. Probably not. There's probably not. This is probably not the opinion of everyone. But I still thought it was interesting because you typically don't often see, um, you do not often see the um, the the OCG players voice their opinions that much. Maybe I'm just not in the right like Twitter circles or whatever, right? Like I'm not in in contact personally with a whole lot of OCG folks. But I do think this is a, an interesting take. And honestly, looking at the, the history of the OCG of the of the recent years, I feel like I can get behind this statement. I definitely see where they're coming from. I don't know if I agree that they are ruining the game. I, I think that's a little bit extreme of a, of a thing to say. But I, uh, I do understand the sentiment looking at this... Um, looking at this limit forbidden limited list in particular it's like this is a ban list i this would have been an okay ban list i would say like one month into fired format right this would be an okay for example these changes i personally think would be somewhat okay for us at the moment because we just got that deck right and this is like a okay you just got this powerful deck we don't quite want to kill it but we want to hit it a little bit to make it more manageable, right? So here you go. This and the context in the TCG is like, okay, this deck is like a month old. So that's why it would be fine. For the OCG, it's like five. And that is that's the difference. For like for five months into tier one, tier zero fire format, this is crazy. Right? Um but yeah, I, I can't say that I I'm like I'm not I'm not always incredibly happy with how the TCG does everything, but I do think that our ban lists have mostly been they've not been perfect. But not not by not by a long shot. Some of them better than others, but they I I, I do agree they they're better. They do a better job than the OCG. Like I think. And this is obviously very um very subjective. But I do agree. I do think they, they do it better. And then the comment section had this huge, like, um, discussion going on of how, like, um, you guys have this problem in the OCG. In the TCG, we have the problem of 
um, like card prices and all that kind of stuff. The TCG isn't perfect either. The TCG has its downsides compared to the OCG, like for example, affordability of cards and all that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, it's it's not all black and white where like OCG is better than TCG or TCG is better than OCG. They have their, their pros and cons, but I do think that this was an interesting take to see according to... Um, that according to some OCG players, they are also not happy with how their ban lists are being handled. And I, I'm way more happy with um, with how our ban lists are being handled anyways. Um, and I'm saying all this with high hopes for the next one, obviously. Um, we've, all, we've all been through the discussions at this point uh, of the next ban list. So now all there's left is to wait until it actually happens. We'll see. Anyways... That's my that's my take on this forbidden and limited list. Um, let's talk about summon sorcerers. This card came back, and it has an errata, um, which was obviously expected. There was this there was this announcement that it was going to be a promo of some magazine. I don't know what the name of the magazine is, uh, but in I think in Japan. They are mailing out copies of Summon Sorceress for a for a magazine, and that got people speculating that Summon Sorceress would be uh, unbanned and would receive an errata. Because I'm gonna be honest with you, there is no way that they could ever bring back Summon Sorceress if they didn't change their card text. So they decided to do that. Uh, so here is how it reads: It is obviously still a Link Three Dark Spellcaster with 2400 attack. It needs. Two non-token monsters with the same type. I believe that's how it's been before. I don't know if they changed the requirements, but I think that's what it was. Uh, you can only use the effect of this card's name once per turn. If this card is Link Summoned, you can special summon one monster from your hand in defense position to your opponent's zone this card points to, but negate its effects. Then, you can special summon a monster with the same type as that monster from your deck in defense position, but negate its effects. And if you do that, you cannot special summon for the rest of this turn, except monsters with the same original type as that monster summoned from the deck. Um, there's quite a few changes here to summon sorceress. Uh, I believe that OG Summon Sorceress was not all one effect, right? It was two effects. It was on summon, you could give your opponent a monster, and then later on, you could summon a monster from the deck with the same type as a monster that this card points to, right? That was There were two different effects. And I don't even know, was the thing from the deck even negated? Was the... I, I'm not even sure if the thing from the deck, it was negated. Okay, okay, okay. So for what it is, Summon Sorceress... I'm happy to report that Summon Sorceress, I don't think, is broken anymore. Um, however, I will say, I still don't think this is completely unusable. Um, this is still an okay card that has potential uses. So let's just, let's just, let's forget what it used to do. Let's just think about what this card does, right? It's a Link 3, needs two monsters with the same type, on Summon... You, 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 have to, you have to have an extra monster in hand that you can give to your opponent. Then you summon a monster with the same type from your deck. So it basically tutors a card from the deck, but it locks you into that type for the rest of the turn. Which, for some decks that matters, for some decks that straight up just doesn't, right? Like, if your deck is one type anyways... You know, you just take the free, you just take the free extender, link climbing, whatever, right? The the stuff is negated, but there's plenty of, of things that you can summon that have like graveyard effects, um, whatever, right? Like there's things that you can do with it, I'm sure, you know? I'm pretty sure there's stuff you can do with that card. Uh, I don't think it's going to be broken. The way I'm reading at it, it just looks like a good card or solid card. Nothing crazy, I don't think, especially considering it's a link three, right? It's like, uh, I, I think it's like a comparable power level to cards like Selene or whatever, right? Which are like, um, which are like solid Link 3 stuff that Link Climb and all that kind of stuff, which is somewhat annoying, but it can, it can be good. Nothing too crazy. I don't think it's as good as Promethean Princess. No, I don't think so. But it's playable, right? It's playable. And it's, um, that is 
interesting, to say the least. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Whether it's too powerful, whether it's too weak, whether it's exactly right, I can't quite tell. Um, but I'm, I think I'm okay with this change. I think it's all right. New Dragon Link extender, unironically. I mean, yeah, it can be. I think the fact that it the fact that it also requires a monster from hand, though, is something that you couldn't... You can't underestimate that um, because you basically... You lose a card from your hand and you also have to have that card in your hand in the first place, right? Like, if you don't have a, an extra body that you can just get rid of, then you can't use it. So, um, yeah. LP at home. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, I don't know. You also give the opponent a body. Yeah, giving the opponent a monster obviously can be a, a downside. It can sometimes even be an upside depending on the matchup, right? Like if you play against Cash Tira or something like that, it can be positive. Uh, the card is negated, which I think is good. Um, so you can't do anything. You can't do like Gen Ken kind of stuff. These kind of things, right? You can't do any of that. Uh, you can't give them like a, a, a random floodgate. Uh, that is not possible because the effects of it are negated. So I think that's okay. Um, also, you have to give it one other. It's a small thing, I guess. I don't think it actually matters. But like you can you give it to your opponent into the zone that it points to. Right. So it's that is not the zone that you can like transverse her. Well, if you do Gen and Ken. Yeah, it triggers thrust. Okay. But that's like at that point, you have a link three monster. You have to have a Gen or Ken in hand. You could have just normal summoned the Gen and Ken guys like that's not broken it's not broken that you can give them gen and ken it still triggers but it, it's negated and then you can thrust just normal summon gen you can anima what you summon i mean if you can clear your entire if you can clear this is in your extra monster zone if you can clear that extra monster zone again just to summon an anima yes you can all of this stuff is never gonna happen guys the, the stuff that you are suggesting right now is never gonna be done with this card it's just way too much work to have a thrust life or to anima your opponent you're not doing that ever that's not happening <laughs> i'm not freaking locking me into one type uh then clearing out my extra monster zone just to go anima also if you want to anima after it has to be a spellcaster as well like nah that's not never gonna happen you're never gonna do that <laughs> zelanthus does it without the lock uh but Zelantis is a sea serpent you want to play this in a sea serpent deck is it sea serpent yeah it's sea serpent guys let's just let's 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 leave it at this okay there are possibilities with this there are stuff that you can do with it it's not unusable but it's all of the things that you guys are saying are not broken in the slightest and are probably never going to happen in a competitive environment right which is when you know that they have probably fixed the card so let's just wait until it comes out, until they have some time to play with it, until maybe we get it as well. And then let's see if someone figures out something problematic. Because until someone does, I actually, I, I personally don't think that there is anything super problematic that you can do with the card. So let's just wait to see what happens with it, okay?